In the previous video, we had learned about electron gain enthalpy. In this video, we are going to be discussing about electron negativity. Now, here you have a molecule. This is called as methyl fluoride or fluoromethane. And here, if you notice, this carbon is bound to fluorine. Now, electronegativity is the qualitative measure of the ability of an atom in a chemical compound to attract the shared electron. So, in this bond, fluorine has more electronegativity than chlorine, or fluorine is more electronegative than chlor sorry, than carbon. Now, this means that fluorine has the ability to pull the shared electron towards itself than compared to carbon. So it's a qualitative measure of the ability of a particular atom to attract the shared electrons. And various scales were used to measure it. One was Pauling scale, the other one is Mulliken Hafe scale, the Aller Drocha scale. And basically we will be learning about this and to what extent are the electrons pulled, and what various factors that come into place and all of that at, in a later chapter. But you need to understand the Pauling scale and its relation to the electronegativity. Now, according to Pauling scale, the electronegativity was supposed, of fluorine was supposed to be four and it recently was confirmed to be 3.98. And, uh, Chlorine is the most electronegative atom in the periodic table. So as we go across the period, the electronegativity increases. And as we go down the group, the electronegativity decreases. And this, in turn, is related to the atomic radius. Now, as we go from the left to right across the period, the atomic radius is decreasing, which means the effective nuclear charge on the outmost electron will be higher. So it is easy for that nucleus to pull more electrons in. Whereas as we go down the group, the effective nuclear charge is relatively less, so the atomic size is increasing, and so it's difficult for that nucleus to pull the electrons. And uh, this in turn has a relation to the metallic character. Metals generally have the tendency to lose electrons, whereas non-metals have the tendency to gain electrons. And that's why all these elements on this side of the periodic table are non-metals, whereas these elements are all metals because they have a relatively less electronegativity or electronegative value than the non-metals. Uh, with that, we complete the various uh, physical properties in relation to the periodic table. First of all, the atomic radius is decreasing, sorry, is increasing down the group and it is decreasing across the period. Uh, electron affinity is increasing across the period and decreasing down the group. The ionization energy will increase across the period and it decreases down the group and the non-metallic and the metallic character is again related to the electronegativity which basically increases across the period and decreases down the group. Now for, for you to understand all these properties in detail it's always best to understand the concept of atomic radius and the atomic size and nuclear charge. So it, all the other properties that we'd learned after that were related to this one. So it's easier for you to understand how to basically remember, and you know, figure out the various properties from the periodic table itself. One important thing, the unique uh, or rather the exceptional cases are generally the half filled and the completely filled uh, orbitals. orbitals that we that in turn led to slight variation in the properties so with that we finish uh, the electronegativity and the various trends in electronegativity it increases across the period and decreases down the group electronegativity is basically the qualitative measure of an atom to pull an elect pull, pull the shared pair of electron towards itself generally it's with it's related to the type of element it's bound to but this, uh, there were various scales which are proposed in Pauling scale, 
said that fluorine is the most electronegative element and its value is four. Um, then we also learned about the compilation of friends of various properties. It's generally easy to understand this and then come to the compilation part because all of basically all the properties are clearly mentioned on that table. With that, we finish the physical properties and periodicity. Uh, in the next video, we'll be de dealing with the chemical properties, especially valency and oxidation states. Let me check it out.